This unsuspecting man is about to show just how much of a monster he really is. On September 12th, 2021, this man, 38-year-old Antoine Suggs, assassinated four innocent people in the middle of the night. Our small team of investigative reporters has gathered the footage and case details about Antoine and how all four murders came to be in order to present the whole story in its entirety for the first time ever. This all started very early in the morning a few days prior on September 8th. Antoine arrived in Minnesota via airplane from his home state of Arizona and footage shows that nothing seems to be out of the ordinary, but that changes very soon. Antoine is picked up by an unknown person and leaves the airport with them. A few days later, on September 11th, late at night, Antoine revisits the airport in a new luxury Mercedes SUV. Later investigations report that this car was recently loaned to Antoine. It is unknown whether or not Antoine is connected to a larger organized crime group. While it's a logical hypothesis considering the value of this luxury car Antoine is now driving, we have yet to unfold the full story of this case, as it is only just heating up. We don't know why Antoine revisited the airport, but the surveillance footage gives us a glimpse at his passenger, who bears a striking resemblance to one of his future murder victims, Nitosha Lee Flug Presley. If the passenger is indeed Nitosha, then this was one of the last images showing her alive. According to a complaint filed by an anonymous person, a witness said they saw Antoine and Nitosha taking shots together at a bar just hours after he left the airport. Records also show that Nitosha's aunt told investigators that Antoine and Nitosha were romantically involved. Putting all this information together, it's becoming more and more likely that this passenger is indeed Nitosha. After a night of drinking, it is believed that Antoine and Nitosha went to a residence in St. Paul, where they spent time with three other people who would soon become Antoine's other three future murder victims. They were Lois Foreman III, Matthew Pettis, and Jasmine Sturm. Just hours later that same night, now the very early morning of September 12th, surveillance footage caught this altercation sometime around 3.30 a.m. in St. Paul, Minnesota. <laughs> this footage, we hear gunshots and then that same Mercedes car speed through the streets. It is clear this is when the murders happened. But what Antoine does after this is quite shocking. On the same day around 10 a.m., after driving around for many hours trying to figure out what to do with the dead bodies, Antoine decided that he needed help hiding the bodies. So he makes plans to meet up with his father, 56-year-old Darren Osborne, at a gas station during the day. Antoine's plan was to have his father follow him into western Wisconsin to a cornfield where they would find an inconspicuous place to dump the car with the bodies in it. Osborne later told officers that he had no idea at this point there were bodies in Antoine's car. On the way to meet with his father, Antoine stops at a different gas station than the one planned for the meetup spot. In this disturbing surveillance footage that shows this particular stop, you can even see one of the deceased victims in the passenger seat, limp and showing no signs of life. And while those bodies are in the car, Antoine is inside the gas station, paying for his gas just like it's another normal day. Antoine continued traveling to the meetup spot, moving from St. Paul, Minnesota to Dunn County, Wisconsin. This time, stopping at the originally planned gas station, we see him and his father convene at the gas station and they speak a bit before driving away. It is presumed Antoine had now moved the body out of the front passenger seat, considering his father would have clearly noticed a deceased human being sitting in the car. That is, if Antoine's father is telling the truth. Again, at this point, according to the father, he did not know what Antoine was up to. However, it is reported that Antoine allegedly confessed to his father soon after the meetup, that he had snapped and shot the victims. At this point, it's becoming more and more difficult for Antoine's father to deny his involvement with this situation. 
Antoine and his father allegedly went on to hide the car with the bodies in it in a cornfield further into Wisconsin. It is reported that a local anonymous farmer found the abandoned Mercedes in a cornfield in Dunn County, Wisconsin. He very quickly reported it to the police. At this time, no one knew of Antoine's or his father's involvement. However, we do have body cam footage that details some of the officer's experiences investigating the car in the cornfield with the deceased victims in it. What they find is extremely brutal. That's where we're gonna go in, right here. We did open the back door. We need to open the back door. Do we know if that one in the back on the far right is male or female? Do you know? The one on the far back? The behind the driver? I thought it was a female. So they were stiff when you moved them? Is yes. Somebody said? Yeah. I opened that door. I basically went like this and it was just you know, hard, stiff, rigor, whatever you want, whatever you want to call it. Obviously, the male, I we didn't check anything on him. It looks, I thought there was like a hole. Looks like there might be blood pooling in his ear, or I thought maybe that was an entry or exit wound. I'm not sure. Thank you guys. Thank you. Yep. No, I ran out. Well, it looks like if the actual key started not push box the tool, there's a key that there's no keys in the ignition. Shoe. See that? Yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's pooled. Yeah. yeah, definite uh, bullet wound to the right side of the face, right side of the ear. On him, on, on the male. These officers are taking careful note of entry and exit wound details for a very important reason. This detail alone is extremely helpful in determining if the murders were committed with intent or in self-defense. I mean, that looks like an entrance wound right there. It didn't look like an exit wound to me. I'm guessing she got shot in the body though. Yeah, there's blood on her left arm and on her right, and it's old. Watch your right shoulder, man. Yep. Yeah. Oh, what's in the pocket, Dan? There? Tried blood. Yeah. Blood, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, it's dripping right now. Oh yeah. Male. And shot wound to the head. Like, yep. There's the exit wound over here. See on the front, on the front seat? Yeah. Right below, right where the shoulder rest is, that white stuff, is that brain matter or skull particulates? Hard to say. Cause she wearing her seatbelt still? No. I couldn't tell if it, it was, was just behind, behind, her. Behind, her. behind her. Behind her. Just probably so that it wouldn't uh, the weights in there, so it'd be. I want to know where the gunshot wound is on this other gal. How do you have exit wounds and there's no damage in the vehicle? Well, then, and, but also, if it's a headshot, wouldn't she have splatter? I mean, you got splatter on him, but it's just weird. Well, his his is coming from his nose. You know, that's yeah. that's just draining from the nose from the brain. Yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Well, did we look through the? Well, let's just get out of here, I guess. I'll go talk to Kyle. During later investigations, Antoine's Arizona ID card was found on the floor of the car, covered in blood. This pointed the officers directly to him and later his father as well, as more information was discovered after they reviewed the previously shown surveillance footage. Officers arrested Antoine's father first and then charged Antoine with four counts of hiding a corpse. Antoine, now back in Arizona, turned himself in to the Arizona authorities. Antoine would now be brought back to St. Paul, Minnesota, the city where he committed the murders. This is where his dramatic legal trial would take place. Over the course of the next few days of Antoine's trial, he claimed, incredulously, that he acted in self-defense in the killing and transporting of the four victims, which the prosecutors stated that they find improbable. Antoine has had a lengthy history of breaking the law including multiple instances of unlawful possession of a firearm. 
possession of marijuana in a vehicle, driving with a suspended license, and much more. Even though Antoine had never racked up any charges nearly as serious as murder, this made it quite clear that Antoine is no stranger to criminal activity. During the trial, Antoine never gave any reason other than self-defense. He said the four victims were attempting to rob him, claiming he was the victim in this situation. However, going back to what the police learned about the entry and exit wounds of the bullets in the bodies, it's obvious this is definitely not a case of self-defense. Even though no one believed Antoine's excuse, he still gave no other reason as to why he did this. So we may never know his true motive behind murdering the four innocent victims. The jurors, after six hours of deliberation, decided that Antoine was found guilty on all four counts of second-degree intentional murder and was sentenced to 103 years in prison. His father, Darren Osborne, was charged with one count of aiding an offender. After pleading guilty, he was sentenced to five years in prison. These are the jury verdicts that show Antoine being found guilty on all four counts of murder. Judge Japal Harris, the judge who sentenced Antoine, told him this. Each one of these individuals deserves that you serve time for each one of them. What do you believe could have possibly been Antoine's motive for killing these four innocent people? Let us know what you think.